right. Uh, uh, is it time? It's time. I think, it's time. I think we're past time. Are we really? Are we late? Five and five. Are we no. super rude right yes. now? Oh my <laughs> gosh, guys. I am so sorry. I arrived exactly when I meant to. Oh, dang. <laughs> Just like a wizard. <laughs> Right. So, how's it going, everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for showing up. Yes. This is awesome. It's pretty sweet to be here at Anime Austin. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm Faye Mata, and this is I'm Billy Comez, <laughs> and we're voice actors, and uh, this is our Q and A. So, yeah, I guess this is just a chance for you guys to ask questions, and uh, we will we will aid them. Um, well, so, if we anybody has a question, raise your hand. It's a pretty small crowd, so we should probably yeah. be able to get to everybody who has questions. Yeah. We're here for an hour, or 55 minutes, because we're super rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got one in the back. What was your favorite roles? Favorite roles? Favorite roles! Oh man, there's so many. I have so many favorite roles. Um, for me, my big, like, soft spot one is Josuke. That was my first big role that I got, and I didn't know how big the JoJo fan base was, and they were like, hey, we're going to announce you at Anime Expo. Oh, you um, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to announce you at Anime Expo. Uh, would you be down to like be at the panel? I was like, yeah, of course. That sounds fun. So I go, I, and they show us to the room, and it's a massive, massive room, like a 3,500-seater. And I was like, are we going to fill this out? And they're like, Oh yeah, we're gonna fill this out. Like, oh my gosh. So, so then I got there and I was just like freaking out seeing all the people that were there and cheering and I was like, okay, if I wasn't nervous before, like all these people really want you to do a good job, so just uh, keep that in mind. So yeah, it was that was that's a really close one of my head for sure. Yeah, uh, I have a few favorites. I guess my absolute favorite, I have to say hands down, is Aqua from Konosuba. Um, oh. Thank you. Yeah, she's she's just really fun. So first of all, I love playing comedy. It's my probably my favorite thing to play. Um, and Konosuba is just wild and wacky, and it's like it's like it's always sunny in Philadelphia meets Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> It's so It's so fun. So if you haven't seen it, it's good. But Aqua is a goddess. I, she ha she is a goddess, and what you learn from anime tropes is that goddesses are immaculate and and perfect and wonderful. But this goddess, <laughs> whew, she is a complete idiot. <laughs> I mean, she is. She tries her best, but ends up making things worse <laughs> as she tries to help others, or not even help people something. Like, so, she's honestly very selfish. She's selfish, <laughs> she accidentally ruins people's lives, but is, and then she like cries a lot. So, I mean, she's kind of annoying, but kind of endearing, and it's like, I don't know if I'm supposed to revere you as a goddess or, or protect you like a little bean because you don't know things. <laughs> Um, <laughs> she's just really cute. But, but as an actor, she's also just a total gift to play because she has so many different levels. She, she cries, she's happy and sad. She, there's a part where she's trying to recruit other people to join their guild, and, she, and people are not interested, so she starts voice acting other people. Like, she pretends she's other people, and she's like, <laughs> or like, <laughs> and tries to get people to join the guild. So she does that, she sings at one point, so yeah, she's just, she's a total gift uh, to me as an actor, and, and and also my favorite color happens to be like ice blue, so all of this together, just, I don't know, I love Aqua. You always just stuff. end up voicing characters that have blue hair. It's true! Okay, so the thing is, okay, first of all, I love that. I love that! I love it so much and I hope it never stops. But I think because I'm not wearing a lot of blue today, but I tend to wear a lot of blue and talk about how, how much I love blue to the point where I think casting directors at this point, when they see a character that is blue, they go, oh, pick a lot. No one just gave it to me, but like, I'd probably pop in their mind because of, because of brand. <laughs> Wait, so when people ask you what your favorite color is, what do you say? I said, no, wait, don't you have like a number, like the home oh, oh, code? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you mean, actually, that's, okay. 
T-A-Z-I-C-C-F-F or later. <laughs> okay, I think let's go. Look, it's a very it's a very specific thing my obsession was these blue. Because if you look at like I can see it from really far away, and I'll be like, that is my color. But if it's like just a regular like royal blue, it's not that that's a bad color, but it's not my blue. It's just like another color, right? It's still a pretty color, but it's not. But it's not then, CCFO Q757, it's not zero, 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 you know? Okay, but also, there's this color, like the mint color, where it's like a little too green. It like almost looks like it, but it's not quite right. <laughs> anyway, now I'm talking oh, about like, Now we're just rambling. What, you, you asked me, this is what happened. I'm sorry, this one. <laughs> you opened the box. <laughs> okay. Uh, I love the paw print, the paw, that's great. Thank you. Have y'all played Fire Emblem Three Houses? Yes. Yes. Currently, and I love that game. It's so fun. Um, Black Eagles. Black Eagles. Black Eagles. Oh, um, we're both Black Eagles. Hey. We can't even talk trash to each other. Can't. Can't do it. Well, except that you should probably recruit me over him if you are. If house. you're an idiot. <laughs> 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 no, Pedro's awesome. Uh, all my well, friends. Your are pretty strong. Yeah, I was. Um, I, I selfishly put like Ferdinand in the front lines of everything. It's like, okay, let's get him like a couple of like, kills and just get him at least five levels above everybody else. <laughs> no, uh, but it's really fun. But I love how. Because when you record for video games and stuff, you just get a bunch of. Okay, here's a selections thing. And you just do a bunch of them. And you don't know what they're going to use. And I thought it was so funny that they decided to use I am Ferdinand von Eyre as his selection. So it's like, you're 25 hours into the game, and then you're like, click, I am Ferdinand von Eyre. It's like, oh, no way, man. That's cool. I totally forgot. Uh, but, yeah. So I think that's really funny there. And I love Ferdinand. He's so fun. The only full name I know. Yes. <laughs> I unfortunately haven't gotten to play it just yet, but I am, I am constantly spoiling myself with like when, when you work on something, you kind of just want to know how it how it is going or, or whatever. And I tuned into the the top streamer on Twitch for uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, and he happened to be like grinding up my character, like Petra. I, I voice Petra, and and. He was just like, like every time he would, uh, have you ever seen Twitch chat where it just like explodes? <laughs> like, okay, whenever it was Petra's turn, they would spam Petra emojis, like, Petra, 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 and they'd be like, more speed! <laughs> she's so fast, she will attack like three times before the enemy gets a chance to attack. So, I don't know. I thought that was awesome to just watch, just like the culture of all of it, and take it in like, my character's awesome! <laughs> you never know, there's so many characters. They could have been anyone. But to, to see that kind of reaction and, and to, to learn uh, that your character's not only like cool personality-wise, but is also just a strong character, that gives me life. <laughs> the game is just so good. It's such a good game. And I used to like play the Game Boy Advance Fire Emblems back in the day, and uh, so like to be a part of that was like huge where I because uh, that was another one where you didn't know what it was when you auditioned for it. It was like, here's a bunch of characters, mm -hmm. come in and read. And then you do that, and then you, you're like, hey, you're booked on this secret project name. And then you go in, and then they're like, so this is for Fire Emblem. I'm like, don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so yeah, I, I have four. Like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. So cool, 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 professional. Here we go. <laughs> got, it, got, it, got it right here. Hey, hey. I got it right here. Really, really cool. Yes. Cool. So. Nice. All right. Uh, right here in front. Uh, what was it like for both of you to work on Shield Hero? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes but like this character was like it's not it's not comedy it was like serious serious like actual villain accuses the main dude of rape right in the first episode and it's just like detestable in every way 
And it was very difficult for me to get into the mindset of like a person who would actually do these things and actually like I don't know when you, when you when you voice act a character when you act any character you kind of embody them you know and it's like like after recording some of those things I was just like I was shook just like I feel bad <laughs> you start apologizing would you apologize <laughs> yeah well what? <laughs> I don't know you talked about how apparently later because there's so many of the late novels well yeah but okay. uh, to, uh, to see why she is the way yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually really excited yeah. to see that whole thing. Well, I actually know my book. Oh, okay. I don't, <laughs> so I I'm excited to see. Time. I know, man, really? I like to do research I so it's accurate. That. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like to make the decisions in the, in the moment. Um, once you're in this industry, everything's spoiled for you. <laughs> <laughs> you but, can't uh, just accept it. Yeah, anyway, no, I had a blast the hero. Uh, working on that show. It was such a. I, that's that's one thing I love about the, uh, this industry is that mm -hmm. I had no idea this was a thing. Um, I didn't know that it had so many light novel series and mangas, and just th that there was so much content out there. And I had no clue. So I got the audition. And I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. And then I remember, so I auditioned for all four of the characters. And I remember thinking, ooh, Ren's cool. I want to be the guy with the sword. And I remember like putting a lot into that audition. And then I remember the casting director, we were talking at uh, GDC, the Game Developers Conference. She was like, yeah, we actually really like your Ren audition. And we just wanted you to use that voice for an album. So, like, so uh, that's how I got cast on that. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, but I just, it's... It's so cool how something can just come out of left field like that that you had no idea existed and just I remember every day I was in that booth working on that show I was so wrapped up in the story and so in it with these characters I was like oh my gosh this poor guy just cannot catch a break of like how much more can he take and then just like seeing those sweet moments of him starting to trust people again and just him making presents for people and like letting his guard down and I was like oh my gosh he's doing it. <laughs> Learning to love again. Um, so I just, I just love the show so much, and also like broken edge. But there's so many like cool fight scenes now one too, where it's just like, oh my gosh, they're so cool. And just getting to voice all that stuff is always so much fun. Uh, he screams a lot, so he requires a lot of hot tea. But um, I love that show so much, so I feel very lucky to be a part of it. Do you have a favorite line? I have a favorite line. He doesn't have like goofy fun stuff like Joe's case. Yeah, yeah, a shield one. Um, he just had a. I feel like every time people are like, "Hey, can you give us a now movie quote?" It's always just like he just screams other people's names. I feel like. <laughs> like Talia, Philo, and that's pretty much it. That's your now movie. Classic anime. Classic now movie. <laughs> All right, go for it. Uh, yeah. So, um, what's it like as voice actors in the booth, but the booth when you're like, like doing your lines for a character, and then something silly happens, and you like, you get, like you're trying not to like burst out laughing at to laughing because of the silliness that's going on. Oh man. Well, luckily you get to preview first because <laughs> when you're dubbing, you get to see the original Japanese and like where the you know how the mouth is moving, and you look at the line and you kind of practice with it. And yeah, sometimes really hilarious stuff happens, and I just like. Keel over laughing really hard, and I go, Whew. Sorry, can I see that again? <laughs> I'll just play it again. Um, but, but it's great because when you see something that hilarious and you are supposed to like do that, like deliver a similar performance, uh, like the, it's, a few, it's a, you get a lot of emotions. Like, the, oh, the pressure is on because like people are probably gonna love this original, and you know, uh. How can I make sure that the dub meets those expectations while still making it my own uh, and just, you know, all in all, giving a good performance? And I think if you're not affected by some of the performances, uh, like the original performances that you see, it's it would be harder to. Uh, how do I say this? Basically, when you are given an emotion by seeing these things, you want to make sure that your performance can deliver the same or similar emotion. So I use it and I am energized by it. Yeah, I'm really bad about 
I don't, so a lot of people will leave a bomb or something for somebody. <laughs> when, uh, you are recording before somebody and then you think of something funny to say uh, that's not the line. Uh, and then they have to react to that and they have no idea that it's coming. Um, I'm not good at that. There are some people that are brilliant at it, like Ben Diskin is hilarious to the point where you're just like, did you guys do any work today? Like, just, like every line is just like some bomb. Uh, Laura Stahl, uh, who is Iger in Beyblade vs. Turbo, she had just a lot of sessions. Uh, she was hysterical and she messed around a lot to the point where it's like, guys, do some work. Um, but yeah, there's just been like a couple times where like they just like leveled me and I just can't get it together for a good three minutes afterwards. Um, I can't repeat any of the things that they have said. Oh, yeah. We have some good ones for this. Oh yeah, show. for sure. Um, we'll but, uh, show. Exactly, yeah. but I'm really bad at, uh, I, I break a lot in terms of, I was working, so on Mr. Osomatsu, uh, we're recording that one currently, and it's just the funniest show ever, and Patrick Zeiss uh, and Christopher Bevins are writing and directing that one at the moment, and uh, let's see, there was, they're both like so funny to the point that here, they'll have like, here's the line, here's an alternate, here's a second alternate, and here's a third alternate. <laughs> like, just like, and they're all hysterical, and like, a lot of times, like, I'll do one, and be like, alright, cool, got that one out. Let's do the next one. And I'll like, go over there, and I'm just like, okay, cool, got that one out. And it's like, here's the next one. Like, and I like, can't get through it, and they're like, you know what, this, the first one's fine. It's like, no, guys, I can do it. I, 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 I can do this. And they're like, no, we're, we're gonna move on. It's like, okay. So, so uh, yeah, I, I always stress out about like, just making sure I get enough like, line counts in and stuff like that, so I don't. I don't mess around too much with like so the like, bombs. How many takes does it usually does it usually take to get through like one of those? At one of Definitely those? depends. Um, the, but the great thing about voiceover is you can do as many takes as you need. So um, uh, for me, I don't know. For me, there's like a certain charm in the way you do it the first time, mm -hmm. where like if I'm repeating myself, it doesn't feel the same. Or I don't know. I mean, it's usually like here's the one. That is that I like just go with your gut basically. I gotta go with my gut and then I'll give an alternate take for like a second one if I have to. Uh, and usually they just go with the first one. <laughs> Next question. Uh, right here. I literally, right before we came here, I binge watched Ico. So I need to. Really? Yes. Yeah, so like I, I, was, I was scrolling through Netflix and I needed to find something. I was like, I guess I'll watch this. And I want to know what it was like voice acting the, the doctor that just executed everything within it. How was it to like portraying him and everything? That, okay, so Aiko is a really hard show because, and this is, it doesn't sound like it would be really difficult, but this guy, this character, Yuya, was just very business time, very kind of just flat. Yeah. A lot of the things that he said was just kind of very monotone and very just give him the facts. And it doesn't seem like that would be hard to do, but it's so, it's the hardest thing. Um, you want to do stuff and you want to kind of give it a little bit more oomph and a little bit of like, a little bit of color. Uh, and then they're like, no, that's too much. Like, just uh, just flatten him out. And we're like, okay. And I would do it again, like, no, still, you're doing too much, just flatten him out. So I would literally, every time I would do uh, lines for him, I would go like this. <laughs> to the end of the line, and then I would be like, okay, it was like, you say the line, you say the line, and then... And then I would literally have to do that with my hands, to not have him have all these peaks and valleys of just stuff he's saying. But it was, he was a difficult, difficult character, but it was really fun. It was, those, it was really those characters are very challenging, mm -hmm. and it's actually... It's, a, it's an interesting thing that I've learned in some workshops, too. Because you play Kagami, and she's a similar... Yeah, she's, she's similar. She's uh, Kagami and Miraculous lady, Ladybug. Um, but usually with, uh, like, was your character a villain in that show? No, he no, was... he's, he's not really a villain, but, like, there was the, he was the mastermind between, like, this huge, like, virus explosion thing because of a surgery. Like, he created that surgery. Oh, okay. It was his okay. brain mm -hmm. that did it all. And, like, he was actually the first surgery to happen, but you don't find that out. And you're like, what do you do? You're like... What? Yeah, yeah. So, like, I just, I, like, when I realized who he was, I was like, I just watched that before coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's crazy. So. Yeah, that was a fun show. That was a really cool show. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I actually do that. Do you really? <laughs> yeah, it, helps. it, it really definitely does. helps. Uh, but really but what I was saying was, so I misunderstood, but, 
but there are like there are villains that uh, play like that. And something that I learned was like when when you hear a villain, it's so it's so easy to fall into the trap of like oh, let's see it's something like oh you screwed up again. <laughs> but, like, how much more menacing is it to actually play it flat? Like oh you screwed up again. Oh. <laughs> like that feels worse, right? Yeah. So it's there's so so much nuance in performance by just keeping it flat mm -hmm. uh, that actually affects you more sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's definitely a challenge, but it's fun. Alright, next question. Okay, question for you. How do you feel about the musical influence that is uh, in JoJo? Uh, so, like for example, uh, Josuke, he's uh, his character design is based off of Prince, and uh, all of Part Eight, I mean Part Four, is going against David Bowie, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the musical references and stuff with just all of the characters and stands. I think it's so cool. I think that's such a cool thing to have, uh, just as like a through line uh, to the show. And um, yeah, I, 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 the one thing I do love about it, we were talking about this yesterday, is. Uh, changing the names and what yes. that all is like. I actually really look forward to those. Yeah. To like, what are they gonna do about this? Because there's somewhere I'm just like, there's nothing you can do. Like, there's like, there's a stand in um, part five called Green Day. Yeah. And I'm like, what else could you do? But to do that, they changed it to Green Tea. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, worst company. Worst company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's just so clever. But yeah, I love that as a through line, just to all the different things. But yeah. Yeah, it's Notorious Maven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It's so good. Seven, part seven, part seven is going to be very fun. Our chain is so amazing. I can't wait. Any other questions? We have another one right here. Yeah, so I mean, you might have already answered it, but I um, kind of just want to know how both of you like, kind of first began getting into anime. Like, what are the first animes you've seen, like, knowing it was anime? Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, it's kind of like, what was your first? Um, I think it was Sailor Moon, but I, I could. <laughs> uh, it was oh, I'm sorry. Process, but, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, oh, actually, on that point, I'm in I'm in Sailor Moon now. Yeah. And so that like, sorry, I'm gonna go off the track a little bit, but it's so surreal to see Sailor Moon as like one of your first uh, animes, but also just as a girl growing up, like a. A really girl power show where like it's not like dude leads or whatever, which was like everything, uh, and it was just I don't know. It, it had a huge impact on me as a kid, and to be a part of it now, I'm Sailor Luna and Siren in uh, Sailor Stars. Woo -woo! Uh, Woo -woo! Yeah! Thank you, thank you. It was like a dream come true. I was so happy, especially since she's like she also has levels and she's blue. <laughs> Yeah, I got into it kind of late, actually. I remember, I watched a couple episodes of Dragon Ball Z back in the day, but it was before I, like, I couldn't watch it from the beginning, I didn't know what was going on, so I just kind of fell off the wagon with it. And then I remember just liking the style and all this, like, I remember playing, like, the Mega Man X games and being like, this is awesome, and, I was, and then, but I still didn't watch any anime, and then it wasn't until I got to college and somebody showed me Fruits Basket. <laughs> So I'm watching Fruit Basket, I'm like, oh, I like this. This makes me happy. So that's when... the reboot! Oh my god, I am. It's so good. Um, so that was my first anime that I watched all the way through, and I was like, okay, I am now an anime fan. And then I started going to, like, Suncoast video and trying to just pick up stuff, and it was hard, because back then it was... It's expensive, and you don't know what's good. It's like when you walk into a comic book shop, and you're just like, okay, what do I do? I, 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 there's a lot of stuff here. So I remember I just like, picked up uh, Death Note, uh, which was so good. I love Death Note. It was so good. That's one of my favorite um, now. And then, uh, yeah, stuff like that. And then I, it wasn't until like the streaming boom kind of happened, but I'm, now I've just been exclusively watching anime for like two years. <laughs> So yeah, I'm catching up on all the things that I should have watched years ago, but I enjoy it myself, for sure. The anime has affected me in different ways. Like, I didn't even like my name, Faye, until Faye Valentine and Come. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a question for both of you. 
Okay. Yes. So, uh, it for is. Billy, who do you ship with now for me? Oh! Is, okay, wait, I need this explained a little bit. Like, like the she girls that he's around? Yeah. Like, Kilo, Reptalia, uh -huh. and Malt and Malt so who, do you, like, who do you suit with better? Uh, so like, who's best girls, essentially? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 It's yeah. kind of like, who's going to see him in a relationship? Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. sorry about that. Okay. Shit. <laughs> Got it. Okay. I'll <laughs> I'll take it. I feel like that, that uh, what's it, that meme with, uh, what's his face? The hello, fellow children. Oh, no. I feel like that. Right now. I feel like Steve oh, Buscemi. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's gotta be Rob Talia. Yes. Yes. I mean, I love me some Philo. Philo is one of the funniest characters in anime. I think like she cracks me up. But I would think that's more like a father daughter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I gotta go Rob Talia. You know, the, the internet's gonna see this. Oh. <laughs> I gave love to Boo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for Faye, um, being Malty. Mm. <laughs> yes. Um, what was, without spoiling anything, um, shoot, I forgot it. Uh, it's okay. We can also come back to it. Yeah, come back to me. Sorry. Okay, okay. cool. While well, she thinks. Uh, from his fate. Yeah. What was it like to voice act our favorite fate, a pirate, uh, who is also now in our fate grand order game? There a is Stop one. A stop The boy! That plushy. Oh my god. Oh, hey, you don't know how hard it was for me to get there. <laughs> I don't know where to start. Okay. <laughs> a stop is like. He's not just. He's not just the boy. He is. He's not just a, boy. a character. He is an entire culture. <laughs> <laughs> and I, the internet made sure I knew everything. Everything about a Stolfo. I was, I was welcomed into this very impressive world. <laughs> I learned the background of that. Yeah. That little bet. It's dirty, by the way. I can't talk about it. <laughs> but okay. But what it was like to voice act him was was really incredible because when I when I was cast I had no idea how big this character would be um, uh, because it, it was uh, we were we were basically dubbing it as it was coming out in Japan as well or or that it was just inaccessible so didn't know the story didn't know the story uh, and there's like so many different characters so I get, I get to to voice the Stolfo and he just seems like this side character, and uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but has a lot more impact. And then you find out, also, first of all, if you haven't seen a Stolfo, he looks like a chick. Like a really cute girl. A really cute girl! So it confused everybody. Uh, but, yeah, so I thought it was, I thought he was a girl, but it is, he is, uh, he is male, um, and very endearing, very charming, and kind of, uh, you know how there was like a wave of tsundere's are like the, the cool anime trope. Mm -hmm. There was another wave that was like, dude, that looks like a chick. Trap, 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 trap. Yes. Trap. yes. Okay. Another thing I learned about that is I tweeted, I tweeted out like, ha, I'm voicing everyone's favorite trap, a stolfo. And then I learned very quickly that the trans community is actually not cool with the word trap. Yeah. 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 You know. No. Uh, because, I mean, like, you know, people use it for fun, and yeah. like, oh yeah, it's, it's a trap because, uh, so you know. But, uh, yeah, I learned that that is actually a word I probably should use, uh, publicly. Uh, so, uh, I don't know, I learned a lot through this character. Uh, I learned a lot about the trans community because a lot of, uh, trans people actually came forward and told me how much that character means to them. Um, to have like a, a really sweet, iconic, heroic character uh, that kind of represents them, um, and that that really moved me. So I don't know. I could I could spend an entire panel just talking about a Stolfo and everything I learned through a Stolfo. <laughs> 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 She's like, please do. <laughs> 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 but yeah, yeah. So I, I'm gonna stop here.
here, but yes, I love a soul food. Yes. Very cute. Download the game. He's in it. Friend <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> order. Do you remember? Maybe. Yes. I remember. Okay. Sure. So, um, <laughs> being Kagami, yeah, miraculous. Do you actually sh want to be with Adrian? No. Um. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Opinions. Oh, I know he even does because he's stupid. But Adrian is not a very appealing dude to me. <laughs> he's so clueless. Okay, look, I'm into I'm into very smart guys. And and while Adrian is very cool, uh, if you don't know about Miraculous Ladybug, there's like there's it's called Miraculous Ladybug and Cat Noir, and their whole thing is it's very Sailor Moon esque where they have. Uh, they're like in high school or whatever, but they have these superhero personalities. Mm -hmm. And Adrian Agrest is the normal boy who turns into Cat Noir, and then is suddenly like this swashbuckling cool guy with <laughs> yeah, suave, <laughs> suave dude. Um, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, anyway, there are like so many girls in the show uh, that are into him, and and I'm just kind of like. I, I don't see it. <laughs> no offense, guys. I know. Like cat puns? Cat puns are great. Like me. I love them. Like me, nerd. Yeah, nerd. <laughs> yeah, I also voiced me, which is I love one. He gave you a rose and everything. A what? He did give, he did give Mommy a rose and everything. However, look, look, ladies. You can't just get a gift from someone and then. You know, give it all away. I'm just saying. <laughs> You're talking about that show. <laughs> this show is deep. Okay, there's so much more to it. I actually love that show. There we go. I love it. But yeah, um, I mean, I can see Kagami being with Adrian, but I, I also don't see it. It's complicated. I have a lot of thoughts. I just spent an entire day talking about my opinions on Miraculous Ladybug and Cat Noir and all the characters. But we're gonna stop here. <laughs> Alright, who's next? Let's go over here. Okay, it's like, any bloopers from recording? Your favorite bloopers? Aqua. <laughs> The ones that come to mind are from Mr. Osomatsu, which would be an over 18 panel. Uh, <laughs> hey. I, I don't. I, I don't know if I can think of anything that's appropriate. <laughs> I apologize. Oh man. Let's do in the back. When y'all were starting, what was one of the most important things you did that kind of really helped you establish your career as a pro actor? Ooh, very nice. Okay, so what's the thing that's uh, helped us establish our careers as a voice actor in the beginning the most. I feel like getting into class, for me, is the most important thing. Um, I, think it's, I think it's so important to always be learning and always see, okay, uh, what does this coach give me and what can this person teach me and what can I take from this and this and this and make my own uh, thing. I think that was really, I just, did, I'm still taking class all the time and I remember just, yeah, exactly. And I just remember the first, when I first started getting into it, I was just inhaling every class that I possibly could. And the thing that's cool about the voiceover biz is that there's so many aspects of voiceover. So it was learning commercial, it was getting into anime, it was um, just Western video animation, game. video game stuff. So there's so much to learn and so many facets of the industry to, to pick apart. So it was really cool to just, yeah, get into class, and I think that's so important for everybody to, to do. Uh, I think for me, um, when I was first starting out, you know, I, I, I started as a fan first. I'm a big gamer, I liked anime, and it was so easy for me to like get excited about anime and voice acting and just try to imitate what already exists. Uh, like, oh, I'm going to be this hyperactive! It was really, really flat, not exciting, just, um, you know, imitating something. And I think something I learned that changed everything for me uh, is to actually just put my own heart and self into it. 
and draw from my own personal experiences to make it more real. Uh, because when I was first starting out, I, you know, I was more like a kind of, kind of like shut in, anxious, really uh, not. Uh, how do I say this? I wasn't. I wasn't as comfortable in situations like this, for example. And uh, I wanted, like, I liked voice voice acting because I could be somebody else. I could not be me or something. That sounds really depressing. I, I actually love myself, okay? But but at the time, I, I just, it, it was kind of like an escape. I could just be somebody else. But I think through the process of learning to be a better actor and, you know, delivering a better performance and earning confidence in myself, um, it just made everything so much better and transformed my performance in another way that also just uh, made me feel like a better person too, if that makes sense. It's, it's hard to explain, but um, I just put a lot more heart into it and suddenly, you know, there were a lot more uh, levels of passion. You could hear more passion instead of it being an imitation of something else. It was something that was mine that I created. <laughs> Uh, you! Okay, um, you voice like the Nico from Dead or Alive 6. Yes, Nico from Dead or Alive 6. So, do you play, or are you really good at like Dead or Alive 6? Do you like it? I actually haven't played Dead or Alive 6 yet. <laughs> yes, I know. So, think about... Okay, so Nico from Dead or Alive 6. If you haven't seen Dead or Alive yet, so she's... She also has blue hair, yeah. and it is a fighting game, and if you don't know, I love fighting games, and... That was actually the first time I was cast in a fighting game, and she was like highlighted or highlighted oh, at the time because she was the new character in this game. Um, for some reason, I didn't jump onto that game because I was like obsessed with being good at fighting games. If that makes sense, yes, yeah. and I don't have the time, and so it's like a weird thing where like I want to get into this. But I, if I don't have the time to be like the very best I can be, I don't even want to start it. <laughs> it's like a weird thing. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. Dead or Alive Six was interesting because it's very very suggestive. <laughs> <laughs> there was seriously like there was a, a line that was just heavy breathing. Like you get knocked down to the ground and then you're just breathing heavily. Like you're kind of in pain, but you're just trying to catch your breath. And I was like, okay. So I started doing it like. <sighs> And it was like, for, I like kept doing it, they were not telling me to stop. It, was, it felt like five minutes straight. Because <laughs> yeah. they were like, yeah, when people do this, you know, they're going to hear that and, you know, people like that. <laughs> oh! Oh! Like, oh, great! Oh! <laughs> Big to piggyback off of Faye wanting to be the best at every game that she plays, uh, so I play a lot of Mario Kart, and I love me some Mario Kart, and Yay. so I was, she was like, well, I want to challenge you, and I was like, oh, you can't handle this, and then she was like, well, what course are we playing? I was like, I don't know, Big Blue, uh, so she started practicing just just Big Blue, and I see, uh, like, we were supposed to, like, play at some point on the weekend or something like that, and, uh, <laughs> and before, the day before, I go on Twitter and I'm just like scrolling, and I see that Faye posts a video of, she does a run of Big Blue, and she gets the North American record. <laughs> I'm like, what? And then, exactly. and then, uh, so then I get worried, and then she, uh, like, we had a group coming over, and I decided to make guacamole, and uh, made the guac, amazing. Specifically guacamole. Specifically guacamole. Then I go to dry a bowl to put chips in, and I drop the bowl, and I went to catch it, and I sliced my thumb open, and I had to go to the And it was like, that happened like right at 3 o'clock when people were coming over, and I was like, calling everyone like, Hey guys, uh, I can't, uh, I gotta go to the emergency room, so like, don't come over. And then, and then uh, after that, they were like, you just sliced your finger so you didn't have to play face. I'm really good at big blue. Just big blue. <laughs> she had, she put the time in. <laughs> that was the chat. Uh, so, for anyone that's aspiring to be a voice actor, what are some tips or tricks to them getting into the, uh, into the uh, industry and whatnot? 
My tips is just to get into any form of acting that you can. Find a community theater that's doing some shows. Uh, find an improv group uh, that you have a weekly meetup. Anything that you can just get some confidence getting up in front of people and performing and getting comfortable with yourself as an actor, that's the best thing you can possibly do. So just, and just start. That's another thing, is just start doing the work, because there's always going to be, well, once I have enough money to take this class, then I'll do or once I do, once I'm done with these, uh, school, and then I have time to worry, like, just start, just jump in and have fun, and just start doing it, and yeah, just get your confidence up to start, um, I would then move to doing some, like, online, uh, there's a lot of, wherever you live, you can do online classes, uh, like Steve Bloom teaches class and is amazing, and there's so many different things that you can do um, to learn more voiceover specific things, but to get started, just start acting any way that you possibly can. Yeah, I echo all of that advice. That's all really good practical advice. Definitely take classes. Um, something I'll add to that is something a little more, uh, um, you should just go out and have experiences. Um, things that you might not even think to try, but you know, I'll give this a shot because, like, the more the more experiences you get, the more experiences you can pull from to give better performances as an actor, and then you'll stand out in that way because you're unique. Sure, Dan. <laughs> Anybody else? Anything? You were Billy. Uh, what was it like working on uh, Cells at Work? Oh my gosh, Cells at Work. So yeah. Fun. Yeah. Oh. I learned so many big words from that show. It was really hard. I always had to have like a little notebook and I would just annotate, just put what it sounded like in my, to my head and it was really hard. Um, but it was really, really fun. I love that show. I thought one of the really cool things about it is once we got done, they brought a doctor in to watch the whole show and then make notes and then uh, be like, actually, that's not a bacterium, it's a this, and then we would have to come back in and do pickups. So it's totally as medically accurate as it can be uh, for me. It's just a crazy anime, but it was such a fun, fun show. The director, uh, Christian Lamont, uh, is amazing, and uh, Eddie was our director, our engineer, and those two are just like my bros. So I just remember, like, we, got, we would go in and just have such a fun time. And I remember uh, my white blood cell voice. Uh, I kind of drew a little bit from Solid Snake, uh, so it's like, target say, like, kind of like, he's down there. And any time I would have to say uh, Robbie Damon's character, Killer T, it would always be like, Killer T, and I'd be like, no, nah, that's, too, that's too much, right? <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> but yeah, and then every time that happened, then we would just like, go off on a tangent, like, Metal Gear. <laughs> and we would just do that for like 20 minutes, like, okay, let's go back to work. Like, <laughs> such a blast working on that show, so awesome. I can't wait for that to come out. And I get to sing the theme song, that was amazing. I didn't know that was going to be a thing. That like, hasn't been in, like, I think since the exactly. 90s or something, so I, when they were like, oh, by the way, you're going to sing the theme song, I was like, sweet! And then they sang in Kaylee Mills, uh, who is, what is her character name? It's not Neutrophil. Oh my gosh. She's the pink one with the uh, braids, or the pigtails, and like the spear thing with the, like a giant fork. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's it. There it is. Thank you. Um, and she uh, did the lyrics for the sh uh, for the opening, and she killed it. It's so good, and it just as soon as you hear it, it's gonna be stuck in your head for the next ten years. Which is awesome. Yeah. She, she did like YouTube stuff for fun, uh, like she made songs, and then she actually got to work on an anime uh, song, like these. So cool. So I don't know. I love watching people's dreams come true. Yeah. Um, so, I love that show. <laughs> and over back. Um, do y'all have many character experiences that kind of relate to you the most, or something that your character's gone through that you feel like you've kind of experienced with yourself? Ooh. Or to rephrase it, who do you relate to the most? Gotcha. I think that the part of the challenge is always finding how you do relate to all your characters. It's like seeing like what can I draw from, like kind of what you said, yeah, experiences. Yeah. But the but the character itself, right? Like just personality. I would say Fukajino from Sword Art Online, Gun Game Online. She's like a little gamer troll. <laughs> like, everyone, everyone's really serious in that show. Where like so in the original Sword Art. 
it's actually like life or death, right? Uh, yeah. We're like, if you die in the game, you die in real life. <laughs> but in, in Gun Gale, I don't think that's the case. So, no, so when no, you, no. yeah, so so everyone being really serious in the game just makes me think like they're like role playing or something, you know? <laughs> which is cool. But but uh, my character Fukashiro, uh or Miu outside of the game. Uh, Kind of just approaches this game pretty casually. Well, they're, they're all like trying to kill each other and trying to like strategize how to best like take down blah blah, blah whatever. And she's just all like do 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 grenade launchers. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's your, so your, funny. Your character's akin to Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, but also it's because she, she knows that there aren't really consequences in the game. Like, even if things go wrong, she's going to be just fine. And so like you see her outside of the game too, and, and she's late for the Battle Royale at first because she's like, you just see all these like empty cartons of ice cream. Like she just ate so much ice cream. And I'm like, yeah, that's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that mine would have to be Josuke. I, he's like the version of what I wish I was in high school. Like, because he's super confident, uh, sharp dresser, uh, great hair. Uh, and he's also just like, can throw down if he needs to, and he's also just really genuine and just like, cares for his friends and will like, do any, anything to help him out, uh, and just yeah, he has like just really nice moments of just being a very genuine uh, guy, and he's also really funny and goofy as well. So, I that's a lot of things of like, yeah, I'm like that. No, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, but it's just like, yeah, that's like exactly what I wish that I was like in high school. That I'm a more confident person now that I can now play that, <laughs> and I think that's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, just keep on doing. So, uh, what was it like working with Jojo? Uh, Jojo, was there like ever moments where you're where where you're like watching a scene and you're like, oh my gosh, what is happening? Yes. <laughs> um, I remember. So I remember right when the first episode came out on Toonami, uh, all my family was so excited. It was like the first thing that I was on TV for, where they could actually watch it and tune in and be like, oh my gosh, we're watching you on TV right now. This is so cool. So I remember just we were watching it like. And everyone was freaking out, sending me text messages and stuff. And my mom was like, Uncle Larry's watching, he's loving it. And I was like, this is, Uncle Larry's watching this show? Like, this is not a show for Uncle Larry. And then I remember we were recording the next day. Um, we were doing the rat episode, episode nine, where they go hunting. Uh, and it's just disgusting. There's a thing where like, this rat, shoots people with a dart and then you see the people they're just like a liquefied gelatin in a fridge and it's horrid oh my gosh it's gross and i'm just like doing this in the booth i'm like oh no uncle larry's gonna see this <laughs> You just start watching it and you just you buy into it immediately. Like it doesn't take long, you're like, okay, this is the world we live in, and I'm totally down, like, let's go. And I love that about the show. It's so weird. I think all the things I do not question it, it's Jojo's bizarre. Exactly. Yeah, don't ask questions, just enjoy. Jojo's very impressed. What question right here? Perfect. Uh you maybe. It's uh if it's for me. If Kagami was to get a Kwame, which Kwame do you think she would end up with? Oh. How do I answer this? <laughs> <laughs> like, I know you can't pick from ones that are already taken, so you have to right. pick from the remaining ones. Well, so let's see, what's left? There's the there's, there's the snake? The, no, the snake is oh, taken. Oh, the snake is taken. There okay. is, there's the dragon, the tiger. The uh, tiger. The, the, no, the monkey was just given out. Yeah. Uh, there's well, I mean, of those already, I would probably say the dragon. The dragon? Is closest to someone like her. I was going to say, I think she would probably be best as the tiger. I could see that too. Yeah, because yeah, she is prowling and fierce, but majestic still. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> What's this question? In the back. Yeah, do y'all have any rituals, anything that you do before going into the group to 
help you, whether it's like voice exercises or like your hot tea, mm -hmm. anything like that. Do you got rituals? So, I live like 45 minutes away average from all the studios, so I always have this time in the car to myself. And I like to sing or rap or whatever as I go to the studios. Um, yeah, it's really just that. I just kind of sing to myself, and I'll drink some hot tea as well. A little, little hot green tea with a little bit of honey. Yep. That's yeah. mostly it. Warm up and then warm down uh, in the car usually. It's really nice. Uh, so I always do like tongue twistery things. Like I was talking about in our thing yesterday, I do a lot of guns and ships from Hamilton. Uh, or that fast part of Ed Sheeran's Sing. Uh, that little rap thingy in there, like I, that's just like a fun little thing, and I'll like super like enunciate it and try and get your articulators going. So it's like uh, a lot of that dumb stuff. Uh, and then, but it does make a difference. If I feel like ah, I'm fine, I don't need to do that stuff today. I don't feel like it. And then I'll go into the booth, and then I'll just be completely mush mouth, and I'll be like ah, but. So then in that kind of thing, I always take a pencil and you put it in your mouth. So you're like smiling, and then you say the line, and your tongue has to work really hard to get the line out, and then you take the pencil away, and then it's like flawless. So in an emergency situation, that always helps out a lot. But yeah, and then warming down, uh, a lot of like humming and stuff like that um, always really helps out. Uh, and yeah, if you had a really rough session, hot tea. And there's a low quad honey that has a Chinese name that I am not even going to attempt to pronounce. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. That's the one. Uh, that's, that's really great if you had a really screaming session. Yeah. So. That's good. Yeah. For sure. And yeah. Funny. If you could cosplay as any of your characters, who would you choose? Aqua? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, as much as I love Aqua, I don't think I'd make a very good Aqua. Well, not with that attitude. <laughs> Probably nice. would probably fit me more. I don't know. I mean, I would definitely cosplay Aqua, but it's just I, I've actually been thinking about this because I was like, maybe I should cosplay and sell prints or something <laughs> of my characters. That'd be cool. Nice. But yeah. I'm working on something right now. Uh, so you I are want Josuke. I want to do Josuke, and I want to. So I found a purple suit, and I just got it tailored, and. I want to do like, you know what Disney bounding is? Yeah. So now you can't go to Disneyland or Disney World dressed as Cinderella, because then like kids will be like, oh my gosh, it's Cinderella, let's go take it. It's not the Disney experience. Um, so you can't dress up as the characters, but you can dress like in the realm of the characters of like having a color pattern. And I love watching, seeing what people come up with with those things. So I want to have just like a purple suit and a nice sharp yellow shirt, and then I'm going to get like a pin for each of the things, and then just like pump the hair up, and just, I want to do that, I'm going to work on that, so. Got the suit, I got to keep working on it, though. it's a work in progress. Yeah, right here, you have a question. Yeah! Um, so, Salsa Work is the only reason I passed biology class, because I didn't know what to do, and I didn't know what to do, so thank you for helping me pass that. You're welcome. Nice. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, but since I'm still in high school, I was just wondering if either of you ever did theater in school? Yep. I think we both came yeah. Here, yeah. I did theater for, oh my gosh, I was super into theater since third grade. Um, I think that was my first show and just like did the plays all the time. And then started, once I got to high school, I was just, it was like, okay, what's time to think about what you want to do when you go to college? And I was like, I think this is the only thing I can do. So I was a theater major uh, and fell into musicals when I was in college. And, did that until four years ago when I got into voiceover. Uh, but yeah, I played Aladdin in the, in the Aladdin Musical Spectacular in <laughs> Disney's California Adventure. Uh, that's the thing that brought me out to California to start pursuing voice acting. So yeah, very grateful to, to the theater. And I think we have time for, oh my gosh, we have one minute, we're gonna lightning round. Anybody who has a question, just keep your hand raised, we're gonna just lightning round all of them, ready? Okay. Right. If you have, like, any future jobs, what like characters are you looking for? Anything original? Yeah, it's not a um, a Nickelodeon animated TV series. Uh, in the back. What's more important for, from a casting director's point of view? Original, just natural speaking voice or character? I think the acting is always the thing that's going to win out. Yep. Yeah. Do you all have to play the League of Legends and who is your favorite champion? Oh, yes! Yes, I'm very obsessed with TFT 
right now. Very upset. I've been playing like every night till like 4 a.m. Anyway, my favorite character in that right now is oh, or just in general. Mm, 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 I'm gonna say Morgana. Yeah. I have never played League of Legends. Me either. Oh, this is over here. What can we do as fans to not drive you crazy at conventions? <laughs> you guys are great. Thank you for being here. You guys are awesome. <laughs> uh, so, also, I, I like how no, no I'll, I'll, yeah. I, 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 I love this Stolfo. <laughs> yes, I love, I, love, I, I, I love this Stolfo too, which is why I'm in this outfit. Nice. <laughs> and let's oh, know what you said when you came it's in. It's not a question. I just wanted to say thank y'all very much. Thank you guys. This is yeah. so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you can pull off? I'm kidding, I'm kidding, he's great. This show is dedicated to Uncle Larry. Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure or what, 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 how people normally react when they see people cosplaying as the char their characters they voice. Oh, I love it. Okay. Thanks again, guys. Have a good one. Thank you for helping me pass my first year of high school. Oh, of course. <laughs> so you did it yourself.